Hello guys, uh, welcome to this tutorial. Before we begin, I would like to give credit where credit is due. Uh, part of this tutorial uses code from Orange Marshall's Forge HUD Utility. Um, I will leave a link in the video description if you want to see his original code before I've adapted and modified it to use in this tutorial. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to be going over draggable HUDs and basically the basics of um, module manager for mods. Um, yeah, so let's get started. So first, let's remove our test class. We don't need that anymore. I also got to go into client and we are going to just delete this line. Perfect. So what we want to do now is we want to have a render event so we can render things to the screen. So let's make a new class. Let's call it render event. And we are going to say extends event. And we are going to do client named at event. And there's going to be nothing in here. It's just going to be an empty one. And what we want to do is we want to now go to net minecraft client render right there. We want to go to entity renderer and we want to search entity renderer for um, scale factor right here. So once you find scale factor, we want to go right before frame finish and we're going to say new render event dot call and import render event control shift no and there's that um so now what we want to do is let's make a new package to hold everything in so we're gonna, let's go gui let's make a new one just called hud uh, and in this we are going to make a new class and we're going to call it screen position um this class is going to help us with screen coordinates, allowing us to interchange between um, relative and absolute um, screen position coordinates. So we're going to say private static final minecraft mc equals minecraft dot get minecraft. Now we can use mc wherever we want. So we're going to have private double x and y for holding coordinates. So I'm going to say public screen position, and we're going to take double x and a double y, and we're going to call a function we haven't made yet called set relative, uh, set relative x comma y. I'm going to make one more, I'm going to say public screen position int x int y, and this is going to be called set absolute x, y. Alright, um, now let's create these functions. We're going to do a set relative function. Uh, we'll move that below here. And we want to set absolute function. We'll fill those in a minute, but let's just have them created. So let's do a couple more. We're going to say public static screen position. We're going to say from relative, I don't think I spelled that right, R-E-L-A-T position. We're going to take double X, double Y. We're going to just return a new screen position, double X, double Y. This is just kind of to help. Um, and we're going to do from absolute position int and an int. And I'm just going to return that. Um, you can use the constructors if you want, but it's just kind of nice to think about um, from absolute and from relative, in my mind at least. Um, so now we're going to have a function that can say public int get absolute x, which is going to return us the absolute x coordinate. We're going to say scaled resolution res equals new scaled resolution pass minecraft into that. We're going to return cast to int 
of y times res dot get scale height. Oops, get scale width, sorry. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. There we go. And now we won't gonna copy this. I'll move that one, there's a need for it. Let's copy that, paste that, get absolute y, change that to y, change this to height. It's okay. There's that. Now we want get relative x, so we're going to say public double get relative x return x public double get relative y. We're just going to return y. Um, now for the set relative and set absolute. So set relative is going to be easy, which is basically we're going to I'm going to rename those to x. Yeah, so we're going to say this dot x equals x, this dot y equals y. That was easy. Now we're going to do scaled resolution. Res equals new scaled resolution mc for Minecraft. We're going to say this dot x equals cast. I'll double just to make sure. x divided by res dot get scaled height. Or get scaled width is really what we want. We're going to say this dot y equals double y divided by res dot get scaled height. I guess since we could use get scaled double, but it, this is going to work fine. Overthinking this. Let's just do it in a way that makes sense. So now we got that, we can close out of these two. Let's make, we're going to make an interface right now. We're going to call this iRender config. Basically, this is just going to hold two functions to save and load um, the screen position. So we're going to say public void save screen position position. And we're going to say public screen position load. And that'll be it for that one. Make a new interface. I'm going to call this iRender. And this is going to extend iRender config. And I'm going to have a couple methods in here int get width, um, which is going to be in pixels. And then we want another one int get height, which is also going to be in pixels. We want to void render. Screen position position. We want a default void render dummy. Pass in screen position position. And this is just going to be called, this is defaultly just going to be called render with the position. Uh, the difference between these two is render dummy will be called when you are rendering the position screen and render is called when it's rendering onto your main screen. And so you can display everything in render dummy um, and show, oh, you know, like here's where my keystrokes mod is and here's, you know, whatever, a draggable scoreboard will say. Um, but if you want the scoreboard disabled or keystrokes disabled, um, you don't have to, you know, render won't be called. So you won't actually be displayed when you're, when you're dragging them around, it will be displayed. You don't have to use this, um, but it can be pretty useful. Uh, and then we are going to want a public default boolean is enabled. And we're just going to set that to true. Turn true. And that'll be it um, for this interface. So now what we want to do is we're going to make a new class. This is going to be called the HUD manager. Um, this will basically take care of registering UI elements to the screen. Um, it also takes care um, of rendering them. So we're going to say private HUD manager because we're going to have an instance of it. So there's no need for a constructor to be public. We're going to say par or private static HUD manager instance equals null. Uh, we're going to say public. We actually want to get get instance. We can just do that. Um, but we can say if instance does not equal null, 
return instance. What is going on next door? Sorry if you can hear things. It's almost 10 o'clock at night in a college dorm and people are throwing things. I don't know what's going on, but who knows? It's just very loud. I'll try to edit out some of the annoying audio if I can, but no promises on my late night editing skills. I've already seen in my last video that I left a lot of mistakes in without realizing it. So the chances of me editing the audio out late at night and actually have it work out well is pretty slim, but we'll find out. Uh, we want to say instance, sorry, that was kind of a sidetrack. Instance equals new HUD manager. We're going to event manager dot register this. So we're going to register it. Um, oops, sorry, not this. We're going to say instance it's static. Um, and we're going to return instance. All right. Um, what the heck? It's like someone's using like a saw or something. <laughs> Honestly, sounds like someone is using a chainsaw in like the room next door. I'm not even joking. That is a little concerning, I guess. Um, okay, anyway. <laughs> private set, and we were going to pass in a set of I renderer, um, registered renderers equals set dot new hash set. So let's import those, and oh, let's just call, I named this I render. Uh, I'm going to rename that to I renderer because it is what does the rendering. Uh, yeah. uh, let's do private uh, Minecraft and see if we'll Minecraft, get Minecraft. All right, now we're gonna make a couple of like um, functions just to like register and stuff. So we're going to say public void register I render um, do three dots. Uh, we're just gonna call that renderers. This is getting <laughs> renderers. You know, you just keep adding er and er onto it. <laughs> uh, that's not um, we're just going to say for i render render colon renderers. This dot register renders dot add render. And we are going to now make another function public for unregister, unregister, um, and we're going to pass in a set um, of renderers. We can go through them. I'm just going to do some lazy copy and pasting. It's late. <laughs> uh, and we're going to just say dot remove instead of dot add. Um, we also want to get the render, so let's say get registered renders, and I'm going to make this um, a collection. Um, and I'm going to, you know, come on, import it. Thank you. And I'm going to say, make a copy of it. So sets dot new hash set of the, of, um, I, well, what did I call it again? Registered renders. Um, we also want public void open config screen, so we can open this our configuration screen. Um, so we're going to say mc dot display GUI screen new hud config screen, and we'll just pass this into it. Uh, we don't have that made yet, but we'll make it in a little bit. We also want an event target public void on render render event e good enough name. Oops, those are not very tight brackets. I'm gonna say if mc.current screen equals null or Oh, you know what I just realized? I put too many braces there. 
equals null or mc.current screen instance of GUI container. GUI container or mc.current screen instance of GUI chat. So if it's one of those, we want to go through all the renderers for irenderer, renderer, colon, renderer, yeah, colon, all the registered ones. We're going to just say call, renderer, renderer. All right, now I'm time to make this function. Create method, call, renderer. It's going to say if not, render dot is enabled. It's not enabled, but let's just return. We don't want to do anything. Um, we're going to say screen position position equals render.load. If position is null, uh, we'll just set it to center of the screen. So position equals new or sorry, equals screen position dot from relative position 0 0.5, 0 0.5. It'll be center of the screen. And we're gonna say render, not render, position. All right, that's it for this class. So now let's make the configuration screen. So I'm gonna hover over this, say create, say finish. And now, times, now comes time to make this. So we're going to say final, or private final, hash map of iRenderer to screen position, renders equals new hash map of iRenderer, screen position. Like that. Uh, control shift O to import everything. And we're going to have um, a private optional I render I render selected render equals optional dot empty. Oops, just, just give me optional. Thank you. Now what we want to do really quick is we want to say uh, we uh, we actually need get a little ahead of myself. This is what happens when it's like late at night. I've been working all day. My brain is like skipping over lines in my notes. We want private int prevx pre y previous x and y coordinates. Now we can start creating a HUD screen. So in the constructor, we're going to say collection of i render registered renderers equals uh, we need to pass the HUD manager in here. We'll just call it API, I guess. I don't know. I don't have a better name off the top of my head. Um, we want to say API.get registered renderers. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, now I want to say for I renderer when in registered renderers uh, if um, if uh, render is enabled, so if it's not enabled, let's just continue through the loop. We don't need to do anything if it's not enabled. Um, we don't really want to render it anyway. Uh, you could add something to grade out if you want to, but I'm just not going to render it. So we're going to say screen position position equals render.load. Same kind of dealio um, with the HUD manager. We're going to say if pause is null. Did I say? 
Yeah, I did. Okay. Um, we want to say pause equals screen position dot from relative position is 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And then we want to call a function. We haven't made it called adjust bounds aj e j j us adjust bounds renderer and the position and then we want to say this dot renderers dot put ren position so now let's draw the screen i feel like that's a good it's a good start for right now so we're going to do control space draw screen so now what we want to do is in draw screen we're going to just draw the background so super dot draw screen or no actually that's wrong super dot draw default background that's what i meant to do and i don't want to call that um, we're going to first create a copy um final float z backup of the z index equals this dot level z level sorry uh and then we're going to say this dot z level is like 200 just put it all the way front in the order of gy screens um so it overlays everything um and then we're going to say this dot draw we're going to call function we haven't made yet but hollow rect for hollow rectangle we're going to say zero comma zero comma oops zero comma zero comma this dot width comma this dot height and i'm gonna actually minus one on each of those um so we can actually see this and then the color zero x ff -F zero, 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 zero or no we'll do red so so that's red because the first two bytes are transparency and that's rgb so we haven't made that function yet, but that's fine. Don't worry about it. We'll make it in just a little bit. Uh, now let's go through every i renderer. So for i renderer, renderer colon renders dot key set. Gonna say screen position position equals renders dot get of the position of the renderer. Get the position. I'm gonna say render dot render dummy position. This dot draw. We want to draw hollow. So this is mainly for debugging. Also, you don't have to draw these rectangles, but I find it easier to understand where things are. So we're gonna say position dot get absolute x for a position dot get absolute y comma render dot get width comma render dot get height and for color let's just do like aqua 0x ff transparency 0 0 for red ff for green ff for blue it's gonna be aqua um so now i think better than ever let's create this method really quick um so we're going to just draw four horizontal lines. So we're going to say this dot draw or two horizontal, two vertical. Sorry, draw horizontal line. We're going to say X or well, we're going to name this X, Y, W, H, C for color. So this is going to be X, X plus W, Y, color, C. I'll name that color, you know, whatever. Then I'll know what it is. These X, Y width height, that's pretty common, but having C, B color, that's a little weird. I don't know. So that's going to be a top line. Going to do the bottom line. This dot draw horizontal line. Going to say X, X plus W, X plus W, um, and then Y plus H. And we're going to draw the two side panels. So it's going to be this dot draw vertical line. We're going to say x, 
y plus h uh, y and then this I draw a vertical line x um, or yeah this, sorry this is gonna be x plus w x plus w oh well, I'm in caps lock now x plus w so this is gonna be y plus h and then y and then color and so that should draw us a hollowed out rectangle um so now let's um handle key typed event so handle that we're going to skip that remove that we're going to say if key code equals keyboard dot escape so if we want to close the gui click the escape key um, and then we're going to say renders dot entry set dot for each uh, entry oops yeah entry uh, do -ba -do -ba -do. close that no other way close that for every entry set we're going to say in or yeah entry dot get key dot save entry dot get value um, and then we want to close the GUI so we're going to say this dot MC dot display GUI screen of null we'll close the GUI screen um, so now let's handle the mouse clicked function the mouse clicked uh, we want mouse click move um, for this. So what we're going to do is remove super in this, and we're just going to name that x, name that y. Just, um, just I, I don't like these long names, and I'm just going to name it time. Good enough. Uh, so we're going to say if selected render dot is present. Um, we're going to say move selected render by um, x minus previous x, y minus previous y. Um, and then we are going to set this dot previous x equals x, this dot previous, previous y equals y. Uh, now let's create um, this function, move selected render by. Come on. There we go. Hover over it, create that function, delete the to do. We're going to say I render. I'm actually going to name this offset x and offset y. So we're going to name it iRender, render equals selected render dot get. And there's a screen, oops, I have too many to screen position, position equals renders dot get of render um, position dot set. Hmm. Did I not make a set absolute? Did I make that? Oh, hold on. Did I forget a function I made? Mm. Uh, screen position. No. Oh, I made these private. Well, these are supposed to be public. Ugh. It's late. Position dot set absolute. Position dot get absolute x plus offset of x y is going to be position dot get absolute of y plus offset of y Oop, offset of y not offset and then we're going to again call a just bounds renderer in the position and there we go we still haven't made a just bounds it but we'll get to that um so first we want to do on GUI close. So when we close the GUI, um, I don't think there's anything in here. No, we don't need to override anything in there. 
Um, so we're going to just for every renderer for I renderer renderer colon renderers dot keyset. Oops, nope. Renderers dot keyset. I'm going to say render.save renderers.get a renderer. So we're going to save everything. Um, does GUI pause the game? Yes, it does pause the game. Return true. Um, now we want to do the adjust bounds. So let's do a just bounds. So let's, ah, words. Private void AGST bounds. I renderer, renderer, screen position, position. So I'm going to say scaled resolution. Ooh. Scaled resolution, res equals new, scaled resolution, pass in Minecraft, int screen width equals res dot get scaled width, int screen height equals res dot get scaled height. Int absolute x a b is well. absolute x equals math dot max of zero um, to math dot min of position dot get absolute x of this is where this gets a little tricky math dot max of screen width minus renderer dot get width and zero. So now what we're going to do is that and then copy this entire function or that line, change that to y. Uh, we're going to change that to y. This is going to be screen height and this is going to be get height. Perfect. Now what we're going to do is say pose.set absolute absolute x absolute y. All right. Now what we're going to do is we are going to do um got to do a couple more functions. So got to do mouse clicked. Um, so we'll do that's the next thing. So when we click the mouse, uh, X, Y button, we want to say this dot prev X equals X, this dot prev Y equals Y, and we're going to call load mouse over X, Y. Now let's make this function load mouse over. Almost done with this class. Um, so what we want to do with load mouse over is we want to say this dot selected renderer equals renderers renderers dot key set dot stream uh, dot filter new mouse finder new mouse over finder x y we haven't made that yet but we will um dot find first now let's make this so we're going to say private class mouse over finder implement Predicate of I render. And 
out of my methods and create a constructor. Um, so we want well, int private int x y. Um, uh, you know, let's actually name this mouse x mouse y. This dot mouse x equals x. This dot mouse y. Oops. Mouse y equals y. And now we want to test. So by default, at the end we are going to return false. But we're going to say screen position. Position equals renderer. Uh, we'll call that renderer. Renderer dot get. Or re no, renderers dot get renderer get the position. We're going to say int absolute x equals pause dot get absolute x. This dot absolute y, or not this, int absolute y equals position dot get absolute y. We're going to say if mouse x is greater than or equal to absolute x and mouse x is less than or equal to absolute x plus renderer dot get width I'm going to say another one for mouse y if mouse y is greater than or equal to absolute y and mouse y is less than or equal to absolute y plus renderer dot get height. And if those are both true, we're going to return true. All right. Now that we have all of that draggable stuff done, let's create a very simple mod and a little bit of a mod framework, not like too too much but it's just gonna be a couple classes so let's make a new package we're gonna say new package of mods and we're going to I'm gonna close all these just keep the page out of the way let's make a new class called mod and I'm gonna make it abstract actually no I don't need to make it abstract no I'll be fine that'll be good um, so we want a couple things in here. We want a private boolean is enabled. Uh, we'll set it defaulted true. Uh, we want a protected. Oops. Pro oh come on. Protected. Protected final Minecraft MC. Protected final uh, font renderer. Um, but these are mainly just kind of getters. Um, protected final client client. Control shift. Oh, import those. Um, now let's create a constructor for mod. We're going to say this dot mc equals Minecraft. Get Minecraft. This dot font. Um, this can either be the Unicode font renderer or the Minecraft font renderer. You can even have two font and other font renderer. I'm just going to stick with the default Minecraft renderer for now. Uh, and we're going to say mc.fontRenderObject and client. Client equals, oops, it's supposed to be this. Dot, uh, we're going to say client.getInstance. Um, and set enabled. So we're going to make a new function. Set enabled is enabled. Uh, so we're going to make two functions. Set uh, set enabled get uh, is enabled. Um, so those two are really simple. Um, this one we're going to say um, after this we're going to say if is enabled. Event manager dot register this else 
event manager dot unregister this. Uh, and that's going to be it for this class. Let's make a new class. We're going to call this mod draggable. And this one I'm going to make abstract. Um, and we're going to extend mod and implement iRenderer. And I'm going to add in two more functions into here. We're going to say public um, final. Or we can make this protected. Well, I'll make them public for now. I probably should make them protected. Um, get line offset um, screen position and line number. I'm going to return position dot get absolute y plus get line offset and pass in the line number. I'm going to make one more function called get line offset create method and we're going to say return minecraft mc dot or oh, the font render actually the font renderer dot font height um, plus three times the line number and then that will make stackable lines um, so there there's that you know what Let's make a mod, or let's make an example mod that says hello world. Uh, we're going to make a new class called impl for implements. going to say new hello, or mod hello, mod hello world. Yeah, let's go mod hello world. Good enough. We're going to say extends mod draggable. And now we got all of these functions we gotta do. So first we're gonna have a private screen position position and for save we're going to say this dot position equals pause and load we're gonna return position. So I we will at one point get to um, actually saving and loading positions um, into a file but I'm not gonna cover that today. Um, I also want to override render dummy so I can show you how that works. So um, for get height, I'm going to return font dot font height um, because I'm just going to be drawing text, but um, you can set the width and the height of um, this the rectangle essentially. Um, and so get width is going to return font dot get string width hello world um, and you want the largest one so dummy is going to be my largest string hello world dummy um, and then for rendering it we're going to just say font renderer font dot draw string uh, we're going to say the text is hello world dummy. Um, the X is going to be, um, I want to center this, um, so normally don't add a plus one or anything, but I'm going to do position dot get absolute X plus one just because I want to center um, this text inside the drag area. You don't need to do this if you don't want to, but this is just kind of my example. Position to get absolute y plus one. And then the color, let's just make this a green. So 0x, ff, 00, ff, 00 for green. Um, I'm going to copy the same thing for render. Oops, not what I want to do. Um, hello world. Then I'm going to make the color negative one for white. Um, that's a quick trick if you want to do white in Minecraft, just make it um, negative one. Um, and that should be it for our mod. Um, but we had a couple other things we got to do in order to um, actually make this all work. So we need a way to keep track of all the instances of our mods. So let's make a new class called mod instances. It's basically just going to hold a new 
static instance of all of our mods. So we're going to say uh, private static mod hello world mod hello world good enough. And we want public static void register. And we're going to pass in the HUD manager. Let's call it API. Uh, we're going to say mod hello world equals new mod hello world API dot register mod hello world and then I want to get her from mod hello world so now I can reference this. Um, all right, now what we want to do is got all that done. Let's go into client and add the last little tidbits of things. Um, first, what we're going to do is we're going to say private pud manager pud manager, and I'm going to make a new function called public void start. Um, and inside start, we're going to say pud manager dot or pud manager equals new or not new pud manager dot good instance. Just so I have a local version of it. Um, in this, you could also not pass it in if you just want to reference it as the instance every time, that's fine too. So we're going to call this mod instances dot register pod manager. Um, now we actually need to call the start function before I forget. So let's go into net minecraft client minecraft.java and we are going to search for make entity outline shader and we're going to put client dot get instance dot start so that'll be called after everything in the client is initialized right before the main menu is displayed um so now that we got that um we need a way to open our gui we need a way to you know basically just open it uh so let's make a key binder real quick uh, so what, let's, what we're going to do is uh, let's go to net minecraft client settings, uh, game settings. Now let's scroll down all the way till we hit the first constructor right here. And we're going to say public key binding. Uh, let's just call this like client underscore GUI mod, mod position. It's a little long, but whatever. New key binding. Um, we're going to name it mod positioning. I think that's right. Uh, keyboard, we'll just make it T. Keyboard dot key underscore T. That'll be to open my mods. It can be whatever you want. This is the default key. And then the category is going to be your client name. So for me, just my client is called the client name. So get a, a client name or I could put example client, you know, whatever. I'm just going to stick with client name for now. Um, the name of your client. <laughs> um, in both the constructors, we're going to call a function we haven't made yet called add client key binds. Add that here, here, and make the function, create method right there. Add client key binds. So we're going to say this dot key binding key binding. So I was going a little fast there. Key bindings equals cast to key binding array of, this is where it gets a little complicated, of, oh, you know, I don't, yeah. Mm, it's a little, okay. Key binding array of array utils dot add this dot key bindings and the this dot client that close. So you did I get the order of that right? Key bindings. Oh it's key binding. Key binding cannot be resolved to a type. What do I do? Oh, wait, I have a weird amount of, yeah. Okay, that's what I meant to do. I just got a little, little distracted there and lost my train of thought. Okay, cool. 
slot should theoretically add our keybind to um, the keybinds list. But now we got to actually test to see if uh, our key is being pressed or not. So in init, let's just say event manager as a test register this. So making sure that um, this class is registered and let's do add event target public void on tick client tick event e and we're going to say if minecraft get minecraft dot game settings game settings dot client in all capitals dot is pressed so if we pressed it we want to say hud HUD manager dot open configuration screen. Um, yeah, that should be it. Oops, I did not mean to import that. Oops. All right. Um, let's hope this works. Let's run the client. And hope it doesn't crash. Wow, okay, that's a start. It didn't crash. Good. So let's go to options, controls. There we go. Mod positioning. Our client name is T. We'll keep it as that for now. Let's go to single player, our test world, and you should now see it says hello world. Um, and if we push T, uh, we get a null pointer exception. Uh, what did I do? <laughs> what did I do? Did I not initialize Minecraft? Ah! I might have forgot to initialize Minecraft. So, you know, yeah, I didn't think about that. All right, well, let's just pass in Minecraft. I'll get Minecraft here for all skill dissolutions. Yeah, okay. Um, I believe that would be the issue. Yeah, all right, let's try that again. See if it all works. I. So this is a reminder to myself to cut this out when I'm watching back and editing. I'll still probably forget, like the last time. T. Well, it was there for a second. Don't know where it has gone, though. Hmm. Whack. Alright, uh, I will come back when I have uh, solved this, because I'm not too sure where our problem went. All right, figure the issue out. I forgot one line right here. This dot Z level is, we gotta reset the Z level. Forgot about that. That's what happens when I do coding later night. So, push T, should see now that we can drag this around, position it wherever we want, and it just sticks there. Well, it's been a long tutorial. Hopefully I can not upload an hour's worth of video to YouTube because it's already at 53 minutes right now um, and that's going to take a little time over the school's internet. Um, so yeah, note, note to self, oh boy, note to self, um, I gotta, I gotta do some editing. All right guys, thanks for watching. I know this is not going to be the best tutorial since Oh, about 10 30 ish um and i'm pretty tired since i've been up since about seven in the morning and i've been studying all day so yeah thanks hopefully this tutorial is easy to follow probably not because well i'm exhausted <laughs> and i'm making a lot of weird comments which i will try to cut out but you know such is life anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed the video i'll try to get more out soon peace Thank you.